Good morning, everybody. This is Calvin Butler, and I've got a lot of my um, a few of my students here. And today is Saturday, ten fifteen is the start time. We're running a little late with ten twenty. So today is six figures booking free from home show right here in our broadcast studio. This is probably going to be the last time that we broadcast from here um, because we are, I, I, I'm having a private um, studio done at my wife and I's new home. Uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna have a private, dedicated um, studio with better sound quality. <laughs> uh, we're probably gonna be switching to, um, if not a different uh, format as far as what we use to make this broadcast. Right now, we use FreeConferenceCall.com, but we're probably gonna switch to something else that's a little bit more inclusive, so that when we have our guests on. Our guests can actually all be on camera, and you can kind of see everyone, you know, as they are um, joined in, and that will be an option for them to 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 to, to do that. They can do it now, but it's but we're gonna go to a a format that gives us better control and and, and better sound quality. So um, hopefully um, that will help improve a lot of, of of the issues that we've had um, in the past, especially with the open mics. So, but with that other, um, what we're coming up with, it's going to be new. Um, after today's broadcast, there probably would not be another Saturday broadcast until after the first of the year. So it'll probably be on the 4th of January or maybe the 11th of January, sometime after New Year's. So today is going to be the last broadcast for this year, and we'll be coming back next year with a whole bunch of new stuff whole bunch of things going on, but in the meantime, we will be having our new Monday night how-to sessions, Monday nights from 8 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. It's the how-to series, that's the new how-to series that we have implemented, and we'll be doing orientation just once per month, okay? We won't do orientation every week because there's no need for it. And we also still have our two night spot training, so you all will be able to tune into those and see all those on on YouTube and within your back office, and we will be having our Q and A Wednesday. Now we won't have them during the week of Christmas, obviously. Um, so we'll break for the week of Christmas, and then we will come back on those that immediately uh, following New Year's. Okay, so just let y'all know so you all don't come on and say, "Hey, where's Calvin?" You know, like like where's Waldo? <laughs> so uh, that's what's going on. Um, I'm still going to be available to students. You know, if you all want to call up, if you have a question or something, or, or hit me up on Facebook, and I'll try to respond as best I can. But uh, we're going to be, you know, really, really, really busy this season with moving um, into our new home. And, of course, it's the holidays and, and, you know, just all types of stuff. So we were just discussing uh, off, off mic um, uh, the members now. We were discussing the closing of Celion. Um, I don't know if y'all know that. Let me start sharing my screen. So sharing my screen here. And by the way, today's book is going to be what we call an open mic session. Okay, um, it's going to be an, an open mic session. We don't. We, 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 we're not going to do any specific training. But it's going to be more of a public-private consultation. So anybody that's having problems with any part of our platform, anything, uh, if you need help on something, today is today to address it and let us help you out with it. Okay? So we've got uh, roughly two and a half hours, almost three hours a day, to address um, any issues, problems, um, you know, difficulties, uh, if you're, you know, lacking in a certain area, if you want us to go over the script and go in depth on the script and handle some objections, if you want us to show you how to search for stuff on low boards, um, if you want to, any of that, today is the day to do it, okay, because this is a, we're, 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 this is going to be um, entitled, when you go to YouTube to find it or in your back office, it's going to be entitled Public Private Consultation. Okay, so that's what it's going to be entitled. Uh, public private consultation. This is what we would normally do if you booked a private consultation 
and you pay for your private consultation, this is how we will take care of it. You would you would tell us what what your issues are or, or what you're trying to gain more knowledge on or give us a specific thing you're trying to do. And it and and remember it it doesn't have to have something to, to do with our platform as long as it deals with trucking or the logistics industry. If any of you want to know how to start your own trucking company without owning trucks, today is the day to ask that. So if there's questions that you all have about doing stuff within the in the industry and you need our expert advice because we are consultants, this is a free session. <laughs> okay. Normally you all have to pay for this on our what? Our private consultation board, which is right here. But today you all are going to have an opportunity to get a, a peek into how we do our consultations and it's free. So it won't cost you anything because normally, as you all see here, it costs you about, for members, it costs you $50 per hour and $25 per half hour. For non-members, it costs $100 per hour and $50 for a half hour. So no need to you know book a private consultation. Um, if you're on here today and you got anything uh, that's been either heavy on your mind or things you've been trying to get accomplished or other things you want to do within the industry, today is going to be the day to let us help you out with that. All right? But first of all, we were discussing the closing of um, um, Clarion. Um, I think I can find it if I go up here and say bankruptcy. Uh, trucking company. Hold up. Trucking company files bankruptcy. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. You got it. So, um, someone found the link in chat group two. In chat group two? Let's see here. Okay, so someone oh someone posted it in our chat group. Yes, yes. one of the one of posted it in the chat group. Hold on, let's go let's go and find that. Ba -da -ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba -ba. That's why I love our chat group. Our members are always up to date on stuff. Yeah, he just posted it about fifteen, twenty minutes ago. All right. Let me stroll up. See what we can find. You all see my screen, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is this is um big news. There it is right there. This is pretty big news. All right. So y'all can see what's going on. All right. When I when I started um in the trucking industry, I actually looked up this company right here. Um, I was going to go and and uh, 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 work with them, uh, uh, Celion Group. Um, they made me an offer um, and, and things like that, but they've been bleeding for 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 decades now, for at least a decade, for at least ten, almost twenty years. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that you all want to do, if, if if any of you out there are becoming owner operators or you're owner operator looking for somewhere to to um, uh, to lease your um, to sign um, your truck on to an onto an authority, you want to look at the history of the companies. Okay, um, I would rather sign with a brand new company. And my truck on, I would, I would lease my truck onto a brand new company before I lease my truck onto a, to a company that has been historically struggling to pay their bills. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense to you all, but and here's the reason why: because once you get out there and you start running, you need your money, right? You need your money, and. If you're pinning your hopes and your future earnings on a company that may not be in the business, may, may not be in business, you know, eight months from now, a year from now, whatever case may be, you know, someone could come in and say, hey, you know, 
<laughs> we're seizing, you know, all the assets and we're shutting this bad boy down and you're stuck out there. And it could cost you a lot of money. Okay? Uh just, you know, getting your truck back and out, you know, back the way it needs to be and things. And if you finance your truck through this subsidiary, then you're in um another big problem. I think the company that the truck, the company that they backed was, um, I, I, I wonder if it was Capital Truck Financing or something truck financing, but they were a subsidiary of this company. And I know this because when I went down, so I went down there, um, it's somewhere in Ohio, but I went there when I was first looking to, 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 to get a truck. And they had, and they had about, Ooh, there were about a couple hundred people there. And this is every single day. They have a couple of hundred people there every day buying trucks. And, they're being, and they were literally being pumped out at $700 per week, uh, $800 a week, $950 a week payments. Wasn't it Rush? I'm sorry? Wasn't the name that company Rush? I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of the company. Uh, hold on. But, but, I'm um, telling you. Right it's probably in the article because they go into detail about um, the collapse of the company. Yeah, it's it's publicly traded company, Sell uh, Young Group. And this, uh, this finance company was part of that group. It was part of the Silly Young Group, but it was um, truck line. It was a company that had more than 3,000 employees, um, power, uh, uh, trucking giant uh, uh, operators, more than 2,700 power units. That's a lot of trucks, y'all. 2,700 uh, trucks with more than 2,500 drivers. Um, I mean, they were huge. They were a giant. Okay. Um, I mean, they were a giant um, operational fuel cause. Unclear when the car. I mean, they've got a, you know, the yeah. And this way, they see out of Columbus, Ohio, uh, selling uh, operates terminals in the U.S. In the island, but I knew it was out of this area here, up around those states. The company also owns a division of Canadian Highway um, Transport and Mexico Service and Transportation Jaguar. Uh, turbulent times. The statements. Uh, town series and related articles. Additionally, what's in that truck financing company? I'm not seeing it in here. And they may be trying to protect that company. Why? Because it may not be in the bankruptcy with them. We just find the creditors, no one is similar to work. insider. Okay. But, uh, but, but this is huge. Okay. I'll, I'll try to find um, um, the information. Um, for you all, but if but if but if uh, you all are uh, wanting to catch up on some interesting reading about what's going on, read this. Um, you know, uh, I give you a little bit of it. You know, one of the largest um, publicly traded transportation companies in the United States, so Young Group is expected to file bankruptcy as soon as Sunday, December the eighth. Sources with direct knowledge of the situation told Transportation National uh, uh, Nation Week uh, Network, TNN, on Friday evening that the troubled Indianapolis in base mega carrier will cease operations beginning Monday, December the 9th. Uh, so Young began notifying customers on Thursday, December 5th, and the company would soon be filing bankruptcy and no longer be servicing accounts. Now, did y'all read that statement right there? Yeah, 
Any of y'all think that section right there, it would be of particular interest to our network? Yep. How so? See if y'all been paying attention. <laughs> See if y'all been thinking like entrepreneurs. How so? Well, well, well in the chat, a couple of uh, members saying that um, you could try to see who their um, shippers um, were and get in contact with the shippers Very and good. customer list and, um, you know, try to get in touch, get, I guess, some of the owner operators, if you can, in that area. Exactly. Look, when I tell y'all I am so... I feel like a proud dad when I look in the chat group and I see, you know, how you all are up on things and you're sharing and you're sharing not just news, but you're sharing opportunities. You're, you, all are, you all are really starting to think like entrepreneurs because before getting into a network like this, you would see something like that and say, oh, man, the trucking industry is going to, uh, going to hell in a handbasket, right? I mean... And then that, and that would be the end of it. It wouldn't, wouldn't be in the type of thought of, oh, this is a great opportunity. Yes, look, a lot of times, a lot of times, the opportunities come in the worst situations. What's the old saying? When there's blood in the streets, do what? Does anybody When there's blood in the streets, I don't know that one. There's <laughs> an old saying when it comes to entrepreneurs. Here, I'll try to look it up for you. Um, it's, it, it, and it starts off with when there's y'all tell I y'all tell I always um um um, um when there's blood. The wolves start circling. Uh, huh? The wolves start circling. No. It's kind of, but uh, it, it it starts off with when there's blood in the streets, okay, it's an old, uh, yeah, Baron Rothschild, uh, uh, a Rothschild, an 18th century British nobleman and member of the Rothschild banking family, is credited with saying that the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. He should know Rothschild made a fortune buying in the panic that followed the Battle of Waterloo against Napoleon. Now, <laughs> uh, and then you can look that up on, let's say, uh, uh, you, you can look up the meaning of it, okay? Okay? Um, you, you, you can look, at it, look up the meaning of it. Because what happens is, when everyone else is panicking, when everyone else, is, my uncle gave me a poster, when I was young, and this is why I, now I used to I idolize my uncle. Um, I, y'all heard me talk about him, Mr. Johnny James George. He's he's the vice president of AXA um, Financial um, 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 Investments and um, Accounting. Okay, um, they handle a lot of the pro athletes, and now you know just around the board, not just athletes now, but they handle a lot of um, um, their investment accounts, okay? Um, and um, he gave me a poster once, and we're only 10 years apart. I mean, he's only 10 years older than I am, and we look almost just, I mean, it's uncanny how much we look like each other. We both went to the same college. He went to college, he was 10 years before me, then I went to that same college, and all the professors and everything, they immediately told me, you the brother of what? You're Johnny's brother. I don't know. I'm his, his nephew. And it is uncanny how you all just uh, look exactly like each other. Okay. But he went on to play pro basketball for um, a couple of years. Uh, and then he, he uh, got hurt. And then he you know, went back and, and started using his accounting um, degree and started his own uh, financial advisory uh, firm along with a couple other guys. And that's how... AXA got started. But he gave me a poster once that said, if you can keep your head when everyone around you is losing theirs, what will you be? And at the bottom, the answer was 
taller than the rest of them. Now, when he first gave me that, that poster sat on my wall, I was like, oh, 15 years old. Okay? That poster sat on my wall, and I used to watch, I used to look at that poster every night before I went to bed, and I could not figure out what the real meaning was until later on in life. Okay? And that's kind of what this is right here. When there's blood in the streets, which means when everyone else is panicking, when everyone else is running for fear, when everyone else is scared, that's the time for you to do what? Invest, invest, invest. When all the other, you know, uh, all the other investors you know, on the stock market, when they're panicking, when the stock market is plummeting and all the shares are going down, they're, oh, sell, 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 sell. I want to lose my money, sell. No, that's the time to buy. <laughs> That's the time to buy, right? You want it to drop. Because you want to, I, you really want to hope it drops down to the very bottom. Because chances are, the entire market is not going to collapse. It's just panic that's driving the prices down, driving the stock down. But that's the time for, for you to do what? Accumulate a lot of stock. Because your thousand dollars before maybe could only buy what? five shares or two shares of Google, right? Because Google is what, $500 a share or something like that now? So when Google stock is doing great, $500 a share, your thousand dollars only about what, two shares. But if there's a stock market crash and Google stock start plummeting, everyone else is panicking, right? So they're selling, selling, selling. People like me will look at it and say, hmm, let's buy a whole bunch of Google stock. Because <laughs> now I can afford more of it. And then just hang on to it and just ride the wave. Because if you look back over the history of it, it's, you know, there's a 99.99% chance that it's not going to just fail and Google's going to go out of business. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy a whole bunch of cellular stock. No. <laughs> because they, they've already now just out of bankruptcy. Okay, so, that is, so it's almost a, a forgiven that they are going out of business. But here are some of the things that you can look at as an entrepreneur. Look at the industry that they was in, and like you said, now you got a whole bunch of their clientele that are left out in the cold. There's a whole bunch of freight that they thought that they had on the books that was scheduled to be moved by those 2,700 plus trucks. Anybody want to take a guess at how much freight that equals to in in dollars? Probably millions. Billions. Not millions. Billions. This is what when you as a broker and you go to a shipper and you're presenting yourself as being able to handle some of their accounts, a question that comes up often is, can you handle an account that has a billion dollar um, um, uh, um, market that needs to be met. Can you handle accounts where you are going to be pretty much responsible for moving a billion dollars worth of freight on any given monthly basis? That's one of the questions that they ask. Are you equipped to handle that type of volume? That's what we're looking at here. This company was probably with that many, with, with that many trucks. Remember, all their trucks were dedicated trucks. They were, they were dedicated trucks. They had dedicated loads. We're not talking about loads that people just posted in the truck. I said, okay, let's see if I want to grab this or not. No. These were dedicated loads. Well, all 2,700 trucks had, you know, when you found on with them, they gave you a dedicated route. <laughs> now y'all starting to see why, 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 why this is huge when it comes to the trucking industry. <laughs> Not just so. Would that mean that the price of the freight is probably going to go up because they're going to need that freight move? Yes. Not only that, those shippers now are going to be willing to negotiate at higher rates now. Those shippers are going to be willing to work with, what, first-year brokers now. Those shippers are going to be willing to work with, open their doors up to who? 
They're going to be successful opening their doors up to who? Dispatchers now. Independent dispatch firm. On our business firm. firm. So if you can present your case to their former clientele who are now left out in the, you know, <laughs> they left out in a hurricane with no umbrella and no shelter. So now's the time to start mounting and developing your pitch to contact as many of their clientele as possible. Start doing your research. I mean, Google, go to the Sitco site, see if you can find, you know, shippers that were associated with Celion, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Mr. Calvin, how, how would you suggest finding carriers that may have been uh, associated with them? Carriers? You mean shippers, right? Yes, the shippers, yes. Well, Yes. Ask, what's the simplest way? What's what's the simplest way, y'all? What's the simplest way to find this out? Google it. Um, carriers, shippers that deal with Celadon. Yeah, I mean, and y'all got them old grandmamas that say, "Close mouth, don't never get fed." Mm -hmm. Boy, you better ask for what you want. <laughs> That's my girl we see all the time. <laughs> I, well, I can't read your mind. <laughs> you hear that? You my dumb mama. Now look, I was raised in the country, right? And you know, out there we hunt and you know, you know, we cook anything that can be put on the fire. <laughs> my grandma used to love to cook possum and pearl gravy rice. Growing up, I couldn't stand possum. I knew y'all probably said possum. Did y'all say possum? Yeah. We trapped and you see possum. I, was, I'm a, I told y'all I was a black redneck. Y'all don't believe me, but, I, I, but I'm being honest. I really am. <laughs> okay, I, I really, really am. My grandma used to cook possum and, and pearl rice. Now, anybody know what pearl rice is? No. Oh, y'all shit it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch of city fried people over here. Y'all don't know what perlo rice is. Perlo is rice that's uh, is regular rice, but what you do is you chop up some eggs and you make some gravy with onions and bell peppers and mushrooms and you, you, know, you boil the egg, you chop the eggs up in it, and then you simmer that, you, you season it with some flour and some water and some salt and pepper. And you put, you can chop up bits of chicken in it and stuff like this and that, and you let that simmer until it gets to like a milky, you put that flour in it, and it gets to a thick, pasty, like a milky pasty thing. And then you pour that over your rice, right? Then you put that back on the, on the stove, and you let that simmer and simmer until it boils up and gets into a nice little, you know, almost like a soupy type area. Perlo rice. Okay? That's called perlo. It's called, and she would, you know, cook that possum. She would serve the pearl rice with the gravy, the cornbread, and hot sauce, okay? I didn't like possum, right? But I never really questioned my grandmama when she cooked because she was cooking for 13 people, her 11 children plus me and my sister, all right? I was raised in a big, big, big household. So she was cooking for 11 people, but I didn't really like possum. So for, so for years, I kind of just kind of peeked through it, you know, not really eating, but trying to eat it, whatever this is that. And then when I got, uh, I think about 14 or 15 years old, she was cooking the pearl rice and the possum, and I just found her and said, oh, can I have something different? She said, why? I said, she said, boy, speak up. Close my eyes and I'll get fed. I can't read your mind. Tell me what you want. <laughs> That's what she said. I said, well, I don't like, I don't like possum. She said, all this time you've been eating possum and you don't like it. I go, no, ma'am. He said, he said, and she said, now that's real stupid of you. <laughs> <laughs> all you had to do was just say something. I'd have cooked you something different. So you see what I'm saying? The best way to find out something is to ask. Open up your mouth and just ask. All right. So, if you're looking for Sell Young Group clients,
client portal. Let's see what we got here. Driver portal. Access your driver account. We're going to have to have a login uh, for that. Premier International Cellular Group across uh, with three decades of experience. Hold up. Well, let's make this simple. Client list. <sighs> Three decades of experience. Testament satisfaction. Investor center. Now that might be a way to, to find this out. So if you're looking to invest in a company, you're going to know who their clients are, right? And they should have something on here. Key financial ratios, interactive stock chart, historical price lookup, analysis, um, coverage, alert shareholder, directive, litigation, notice of settlement. Now, this is the part of business that a lot of people don't like because it's just tedious stuff. Financial performance, corporate strategy, investor center. It's the SEC filing. But you're going to have to see through a bunch of stuff like this probably to find that client list. Or you can just ask something like this. Let's try another approach. Y'all, I think we may have found something. Y'all think we don't found something here? Materials industry. Bam! Am I good or am I good? And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Y'all seeing this? Yes. All right. Y'all can go and see it. Calvin, you good. Go and see it. Go and see it. Go and see it. <laughs> I don't need to hear it. Just, just keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. But but look. So now, what's the thing to do now? What's the thing to do now? Here you have. Here now you are looking at. Here I'm, here I'm gonna share this with uh, with you all. <coughs> Copy. And paste it. Let's paste this to you all. So. So you all can go and research this yourselves too. That's my uh, my chat. There we go. While you're doing that, Calvin, I would contact their shipping manager or their supervisor. Yeah. And and ask, you know, what I would have to do to provide them with clean Drivers. Yeah, look. Um, first of all, you want to 
Hey, look. First thing you want to do is you want to address the elephant in the room. Those people like this, they ain't got time for chit chat. They ain't got time for small talk. And they're in a situation, so they're trying to get a whole lot of stuff done right now. Right? Right. So the first, so right out the gate, you're going to do what? You're going you're gonna to throw that dog on fastball. Right down the middle, fast as you can throw it straight up, right across the plate. And say, ain't no curve, ain't no nothing, ain't no slider, nothing like that. You ain't coming with no, throwing no jump, you throwing just heat. You gonna start out throwing heat. Hey, look, uh, whoever you call over here at, 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 at center backs, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, so you gotta look these companies up and you gotta find them and you're gonna, Try your best to contact them, and you're gonna say, "Look, first of all, let me express, um, 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 you know, uh, my, my concern for uh, your company in losing the study on account. Um, you know, and you know that was a huge loss uh, to the industry. And I know you all are probably um, working furiously to replace um, those." Um, um, those accounts and get that and get um, those shipments moved. The good news is I'm part of a huge network. You know, we have a network of more than and, and you can use the power of the network because you are part of a huge network. You are part of a huge network. Okay, we're part of a huge network that uh, has more than you know. Just lay it out there. We have more than four thousand members. You know, more than a thousand. Um, freight brokerage firms and on our business managers, all of which have contracts with various owner operators who would love to service your your contracts, service your accounts. Who do I need to speak with to start negotiations on covering um, some of these accounts? I mean, just go right at them. They know they got a problem. You know they got a problem. The world knows they got a problem right now, right? So there's no need to put, you know, shuffling around the whole situation, right? You know, I think that's a bad approach, good approach, indifferent. Sounds good. I mean, that's the approach that I would take because, look, you want to let them know that I understand and feel your pain right now. Because it probably caught them out of, you know, blindside, out of nowhere. Right? So now, you know, but you also got to let them know that, hey, you know, there's hope. And I'm here to offer my help. And, you know, if they say, well, we can try you out on San Francisco, so whatever they try you out with is what? It's a gain and a plus on your side. And it's an opportunity to do what? To grab a uh, hold of a lot of companies that have a lot of great freight that needs to be moved. And remember, a lot of these freights were, all these were dedicated accounts. Now, are you going to have competition from big carriers like who? Swift? Right? Covenant Transport. Covenant Transport, I guarantee you, Covenant is going to make a huge um, pitch for to take up the majority of those accounts. But here's the problem. Covenant didn't have, don't have 2,700 trucks. I think Covenant has about 1,700 um, carriers. So it's going to take, you know, a lot to cover those loads. And we're talking about dedicated freight that's out there right now that is trying to get covered now. Also, you all might want to start checking the load boards here in the next uh, couple of weeks. The load boards probably going to be flooded with a bunch of their load. Why? Because they're probably going to start working with brokers a whole lot more now to get those loads covered in the meantime until they can replace that account. You see what I'm saying? So even though this is what looks like you know, gloom and doom, everyone else is running of a cover, why? Because there's blood in the street. You all should be what? Out there looking in the streets, out there looking for, for the opportunity. On the low boards. 
watch and see if there's gonna and I'm predicting there's gonna be an, a a a significant rise in rates on low boards and it's gonna be specifically from the shippers that have lost that selling account. And as bad as it is for Celion and their shippers, this is actually great news for the industry, believe it or not. Do y'all see, do y'all see my logic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when y'all see stuff like this, and like I said, I commend you all because in the chat group, someone recognized this immediately for what it is, an opportunity. They recognized it immediately for, 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 for what it is, an opportunity, okay? And that's what it is. It's an opportunity. Right? I just posted this in, in, in the uh, back group. Um, uh, hope someone will let me see if I can find what's called that. It's a little bit. So this is their client. This is their clientele. Uh, the got it. I'm at a glance, but you know this is and and you all notice how stuff is kind of like eh. It's really it's there, but it's not in plain sight. You got to dig for it. You got to know the right questions to ask. Look at that bathtub. Now y'all know that's a big what's called bathtub and Wilcox from Enterprise. Simtrex, big account, big account. There's another Simtrex account. Now Inc. They have some huge accounts. Franklin, I'm electric. They had huge accounts, and not just you know a couple of huge accounts. This company was a this company was a mega giant when it came to moving dedicated freight. Do y'all see this? So, um, and this is a wealth of 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 information here too um, on this page that we've just been able to find. Uh, I mean, wealth of information. Okay, so um, right here, put this in uh, selling our clients. Believe it or not, y'all, this is what I spend a lot of my time doing nowadays. <laughs> All right. So, um, so there you have it, okay? Uh, that's one of the ways that you all should be, you know, looking at things uh, when you're saying stuff like this. Uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited on, on for a lot of different reasons. It's, it's going to open up a huge influx of freight that's going to be added to the load boards, and you all probably start seeing that within the, probably as, as early as next week. I would kind of take a look at the low boards on Monday through Friday and see if the see if it looks like the prices are going up. We may even be able to see some stuff on the other day cause from just the announcement. But definitely by next week you should probably see higher paying freight in more frequency on the low boards. 
okay, because of this big closure right here, because of, because of this right here. Uh, um, this is this is this is a huge um, um, plus for the industry, really. I mean, I hate to say it for this company, but it is a big plus for the the industry. Um, let's see if I can, I can find that finance company that finances those trucks. Um. Ohio. What is the name of that company? I'm thinking it's capital. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's capital. Let me do this right here. Semi truck financing. I can't believe I can't think of the name of that company. Hmm. I can't think of the name of the company now. Um, I'm thinking Arrow or Rush. No, it wasn't Rush. Huh? Unless they changed their name, that wasn't the name of the company that I was referring to. Uh, but they were associated with, with hold on, with Celion. Quality. There it is right there. Bam. I knew I'd find it. This is it right here. When I put it in the cellular um, connection, it pulls it right up. But this is the company right here. Quality. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, this is it. Um, uh, I, mean, I mean, they get a ton of business. And every time you go there, cellular will all have all their drivers go and get trucks with them. So, Celion was their main supplier. It was like their main connection to uh, leasing drivers' trucks. So, they're probably going to have a whole bunch of trucks that are going to be coming back. Because when I say they, they literally, 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 there was 100 to a couple hundred people every single day, Monday through Fridays, that was showing up there. And there was, and they have a huge, a huge um, 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 yard with just full of trucks, all types of trucks, all types of trucks. Um, 
Matter of fact, let me let me see something here. Let's try to see if they've got uh, some images. Usually have um, some imagery on their websites. Some people have stuff like this, but uh, search fleet trucks, fleet services. But they had a, but they had a huge, um, you know, you know, just just all type. Of, and these were very popular. You see, they had these kind of used. Uh, I'm in a napkin. I know a friend of mine went and got one of these, and his payment on a used one. Um, I think it was like seven hundred and forty dollars per week. Seven forty per week. Okay, now some of y'all probably say that's not bad because if you make, you know, making three grand a week, you know, you can afford it, right? Is that what y'all said, right? But you you come out a lot better if you just took the steps to go to your bank and got qualified for a line of credit. And then you get that same truck um, that they were selling for, what was the sale price on this truck right here? This is truck right here, that 2016 Lone Star C details. Um, you know, but this same, let's see what they got on the price here. Do they, do they have a price on it? Does anybody see a price? They're probably not going to put the price on here. But if they were selling this truck for $80,000, or a hundred thousand dollars, or whatever the case may be. Okay, if you went and got yourself a, a line of credit, uh, a revolving line of credit, uh, basically a, a business credit card is basically what it is. Um, you can buy that same truck and get the title to it, and pay on your and pay the interest only on your revolving line of credit. Probably going to be about six hundred dollars a month, if that. That's a big difference from $600 a month to $750 per week, right? So on $600 a month, you can definitely make some money, right? Right, right. And, you know, now quality is probably, you know, if someone turns this video over, over, over to them, they're probably going to call me and have their, have their attorneys call me and say, hey, we want to take that video down. I ain't taking the squat down. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that right now. I'm not taking it down. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm 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 not giving out any false um, information that, that nobody on already know. Okay, everybody who's in the industry already knows this. All I'm saying is there are better choices. There are better choices. Okay, out there than just to go and jump on these type of deals. And, and look. These type of companies may serve a purpose. You know, obviously they do. Um, you got a lot of people who who are, who who are, who are not going to qualify for business lines of credit. A lot of people who are not going to take the steps to get themselves um, in a position to qualify for a business line of credit for a revolving line of credit. Okay, uh, a lot of people are not going to go out and get the continued contracts. They're not going to take the time to put together a a a business plan and a presentation. They're not going to take the steps. To pay off some pay off some negative stuff on their credit, to get their scores high enough. So you got a lot of people who are just not going to do that. You got a lot of people that won't even go to a credit repair company and pay them a small fee for them to get to have stuff uh, taken off their credit. Okay. Some people just not going to go through any of those steps, no matter how simplistic, no matter how doable they are. They're going to have people that are just not going to do it. And those people would rather go and spend that kind of type of money and put themselves in that position in getting these type of trucks. Why? Because it's, it's convenient, it's quick, it's fast, no, relatively fast when it comes to getting qualified. You just basically just show up. And if you've got a contract with a company that says that they've accepted you into their, their own op program, all you got to do is go get a truck. You show them, say, I'm, I'm not so young, but this company quality, they look down the list. Oh, yeah, they're on our list. You know, call them up. Hey, this guy got a contract with you. Yep, he's part of our own art program. They no paperwork. Bam. Glad to pick out your truck, son. Ma'am. No money down. Right? Now, that's very 
tempting and very appealing to someone who wants to get into the trucking industry as an owner operator and have their own truck. So they're willing to do that instead of taking the steps to take that payment from seven hundred and fifty dollars a week to six hundred, four hundred, maybe even, you know, four fifty per month. Or at the very least, if you did it and you got a payment of eight hundred dollars per month, it's still way better than seven fifty per week. Okay, but they were huge. Uh, Celion was 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 is hugely responsible for a lot of these trucks that they was that they were that they were putting out. Cause uh, when I went there, I mean there was about there was about 150 to 200 people there, and I would say 100 of them were Celion. So they needed a truck to put on what those dedicated routes. All right, that's enough about that. Let's get into some um, issues that you all have. All right, um, any, first of all, any questions on any of this that we just discussed? A lot of y'all brain are turning, and and, and 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 I can feel it working. I can feel, I can just feel your brain is just kind of rolling stuff over. And say, okay, look, I need to call this company. I need to put together a pitch. I need to do this, you know, all that type of stuff. So. Any questions on what we just talked about? And if not, any questions on anything that you all have about the industry? If you have a problem you need solving, let's work on that. Because, like I said, today we're going to do mostly um, public private consultations. So, who's up first? Who needs help with something logistics wise? Yes, question. Yeah. So, how do you start a service? Without, like, owning a truck, without a truck. Okay. Well, first of all, first thing you got to do is you got to get your, you got to get your authority, right? Okay. Right. All right. So the company that that and you all don't have to use this company, but the company that we recommend to do that is, give me a second here, One Hour Authority. But Mr. Calvin, with the one hour authority, I was looking into that, but you it looks like you can only get authority for like up to two vehicles or something, or how how does it go? No, what you need is when you contact them, you gotta be specific. Okay, you, I don't think they have it on their website. Um, but you, you you when you call them, you gotta explain this, hey, I'm looking to start my own trucking company, right? And I just want the authority that guys can lease their truck onto. Okay. You know oh, okay. So you're not, not yeah, you not go, yeah. Look, look, look. So remember, his question was, how do you start your, how do you start a trucking company without owning any trucks, right? Correct. That was his question. Not how do I start a trucking company without I own a whole bunch of trucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, the question was, how do you start a trucking company without owning? Any truck, and that's the best way to go um, is is to do it without owning the truck. That's what I am doing. What we are doing um, the first of the year, we're gonna go ahead and get our carrier authority, and we're gonna lease on operators onto our authority. Okay, um, but, um, but you will start with getting your authority. Okay, that's what you're gonna start with. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to contact a one-hour authority, okay? And, and you're going to let them know, say, hey, here's what I'm looking to do. I want to get my U.S. DOT number, MC number, and my carrier authority, okay? Uh, uh, now, you notice here it's not on here. All they have is on here uh, is for... This is just your necessary vehicle registration, all right? This is what someone would get. This is what someone would have if they're looking to lease their truck on with you. This is not a not an authority, but it's the U.S. DOT numbers, which you can go out with this. You got your your CDL, and you've been driving for more than six months. I think you got six months experience. 
no, um, 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 not not experience. A six months, um, 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 um what's the what's, 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 what's for y'all? Um, uh, it's time. Six months seasoning. Thank you. On your CDL, six to eight months seasoning. On your CDL, you can go ahead and, and go ahead and get your unit. I think you can get this just straight out of uh, truck driving school. Really, you just want to go get your US DOT number. And file for your own authority, you can do that straight out of truck driving school. I knew a young lady that, straight from truck driving school, she never went to work for anybody. She got her CDL, right? She got her USDOT number and her authority, and guess where she went? She went to, what's that, uh, truck leasing company? Uh, Penske, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, she went over to Penske. Got her truck, I think it was like, her truck was like $2,200 a month or something like that, or $2,400 a month, which is not bad, not bad, but it's a brand new truck, completely covered, she had to worry about no maintenance, she didn't have to worry about putting tires on the bad boy. If it, if it broke down, they replaced her truck with another truck, they bring her truck out to it and take her truck and she keep on moving. Insure, everything's done through pitch, she had to worry about paying insurance, none of that, that was all in her what? In her lease with pencil. All she had to do was find her freight and just haul freight. Man, this was young, I think she was like 24 years old. I mean, she was 24 years old and fresh out of truck driving school. Oh, that's my my iPhone. I'm asking me questions. Listen in on my calls. <laughs> but she was fresh out of um, truck driving school, got a truck through Penske. Went on the road, and, and the last time I talked with her, she was still with Penske, and she got three other trucks through Penske, and you know, and she's doing good, doing doing great by the way. Now I think she could do better if she just went and got you know a revolving line of credit, but she's doing good. She she she's got a bunch of dedicated runs, and I think the last time I spoke. Her trucks are averaging about six grand a week. Her trucks are averaging about six grand a week. She's paying two grand, um, it, uh, probably two thousand dollars on each truck. Actually, a little bit less because she has more trucks. So, Pepsi gives her a deal, but each truck she, you know, you know, she leases, they give her a bulk deal. But I think it's coming out now. She's paying about seventeen hundred dollars per month, or sixteen hundred dollars a month for each truck. The trucks are bringing in about six to seven grand per week, and um, they're generating about six to seven grand per week. She's paying about sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred out on the on the truck itself, all the maintenance, everything, all that's covered. And she's paying her drivers. I think she said she was paying her drivers like forty eight cents per mile or fifty cents per mile or something like that, with bonuses and this and that. So drivers um, they're collecting about eighteen hundred. To two thousand dollars a week, which is not bad for a company driver. That's great for a company driver, right? Yeah. That's great for that's great for a company driver. So, and she's collecting on each truck somewhere close to you know two to three grand on the week on each truck. That's not bad. That's actually great. Okay, that's actually just. Great, that's phenomenal. All right, so but the easiest way is to get your authority, right, and then you lease trucks on onto your authority. Now the question comes: How are you going to to get insurance coverage? So even though you just have your authority and the trucks leased on the authority, who is responsible for the insurance? I mean, anybody? Would that be the carrier, the owner operator? Because you're the carrier. When you get your trucking authority and the other trucks are leasing on you, you are not a carrier. They're the owner operators, right? Okay. Company. So who's responsible for the insurance? I'm the carrier. Oh, we are. Well, we have the umbrella policy, but they have to still cover Because you want to make sure that load is insured, I would assume. All right. Can you buy a truck without getting insurance on it? No. No. Nope. Nope. All, right. 
right, so. So they can have insurance and you can have insur- additional insurance. There you go, there you go. You're both responsible. That's what I'm looking for. You're both responsible. The owner of the truck, so they can't drive the truck off the, off the lot without a web, without the insurance, right? Right. All right, so they got their insurance on the truck itself, the individual truck, right? The carrier is going to have blanket insurance, what we call blanket insurance, it's got to cover his entire fleet, right? Mm-hmm. Now, does that mean you're going to have to get an insurance policy on every truck you add to your fleet? No. You have to have insurance on one company truck, and then you attach a blanket policy that will cover all those trucks, because here's how the insurance company looks at it. Each carrier, each own operator has their own specific insurance. The blanket policy just covers if a truck within your fleet gets into an accident, one or two trucks may get in flat, and you got a blanket policy. Because the chances of all your trucks, or three of your trucks, getting into an accident on the same day is what? How they like it, right? Right. So you're going to get a blanket um, insurance policy. Now, first of all, how do you get a truck if you don't want to own the trucks, right? Right. All right. So what you got to do is when you go ahead and get your authority and you get all that set up, right, uh, the carriers or the owner operators, they're going to have their truck already. They're going to have their authority. Well, not authority. They're going to have uh, their insurance. The truck's going to be registered. You're going to have a tag, all that DOT number, all that stuff, right? You just have the authority that they can run on. Now, here's, here's, here, here is one way. Now, this is not the only way, but here is one way. You can make an offer to the first person who contacts you about leasing the truck on onto your authority. Okay, you can say, look, I'm owner of this company. I need a truck that I can place under the company that we can put black insurance on. Since you made the effort to contact me first, you are one of the first people to to contact me about driving under my authority. I would like to extend a partnership, a limited partnership agreement to you. Okay? And how I would do it, how I plan on doing is this. I'm going to offer that person, right, where my standard pay for the owner operators is probably going to be 75%, 25% to the, the company, 75% up to the owner operator. Okay? So 25, I'm um, 75. Or it may be 73 and a third percent, which is the standard in the industry. And then I will offer them, if they ran the loads that we found for them, if they run our loads, we'll pay for the fuel. If you find them on your own loads, we'll split your fuel cost. Okay. Y'all, y'all see what we're doing there? Negotiating. Exactly, because part of my company, I'm going to have a broker, because I'm looking to partner with a broker that can supply us with what? Get us set up with shippers for dedicated freight. One of my other partners is going to be our owner of another dispatch firm. Why? So they can help us do what? Find backhauls for those off of that freight. They don't have the two-way dedicated. You see what's going on? So in that partnership, we have different um, headings. You know, one person is over the shipping contract, one person is over the backhaul, and I'm going to look for someone that has at least seven years' experience behind the wheel as an operator to be the chief operations officer to run the operation. I will be the CEO, chief operations officer. You've got shipping. Um, 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 you have a VP of shipping. And a, and a VP of dispatch. Okay? Okay. Y'all see how that's set up? Now, with that being said, the guy who you're going to make the offer to to come in, what's called, he is going to be what's called a limited partner. Okay? A limited partner. And you're going to make him an offer and say, look, and I, when bringing on a limited partner, you don't want to give up a whole bunch of you know, shares in your company and a whole, you know, half your revenue or 20% or 10% of your revenue, right? You, you don't want to do that, right? So how do you make it profitable or how do you make that offer attractive to that owner-operator 
who you're trying to get to become part of your company, so their truck can now be considered what? A company truck. Y'all see where we're going with this? Mm -hmm. All right. So what you want to do is you want to draft up a proposal that appeals to that person's, you know, their value system. They're an own operator, right? So you know that they can grasp the concept of finding freight, running the loads, getting paid the majority of what? The lower fee, right? Okay. That's their, that's their driving motivation to do this, right? So right. what you do is you amplify that, okay? Here's what I'm going to talk for you. As a limited partner and for the use of your truck as a company truck, right, I am going to pay you 95% of the load fee hmm. instead of the 73 and a third percent. On top of that, I'm also going to give you 1% of every load that this company runs of the load fees of all the other trucks. Or one and a half percent, or one and a quarter percent, or two and a third percent, or two and a quarter, whatever you feel like you can, you know, give up. Now, does that sound like a great offer to an own operator who was just looking to just do what? Lease onto your authority? Yes. Is it a lot of money that's coming out of your pocket? No. So it's a win win for who? Everybody. Mm -hmm. Because now, now do they, you make all those offers up front, or do you wait until you get some more drivers and then you come back to that driver? No, you can make that offer up front. Why? Because you can't get a whole bunch of drivers until you get what insurance. You can't get insurance until you can do what? Get a what? Truck, right? You can't put the horse. You can't put the cart before the horse. You got to, you know, do everything in which you call it. So when you first start out and you put your hands out there with this and that, you also want to, you also want to put out there partnership opportunity for own operators. Right? And the first person that hey, what's this partnership what's this partnership opportunity? Why? So that that person is automatically thinking, you know, they're looking at this and they're thinking entrepreneurship wise. You see what I'm saying? They're already looking they're already thinking in the back of their head you know, uh, you know, uh, other ways to generate our revenue other than just driving the truck themselves. And now here you come along, you offer them a chance to actually be a part of a up and coming trucking company. And when they can get residual income from all the trucks that are, that are within that company, right? So if your trucking company builds to the point to where you've got yourself 100, 150, 200 trucks, Right? Let's look at the math on that. If you got yourself, you know, and that's not hard. To, getting 100 trucks is not hard to do when you're doing it that way. Would y'all agree on that? Your first year, you should get at least 50 trucks. I'm signing on. Because if you're offering what? Um, for the lows, especially if you're doing it the way we plan on doing it. We want to have brokers so we have a built-in system of supply of dedicated freight. That's first off. Then you have a system put in place with all of our business managers that can do what? Locate and put them on backhaul freight. Right? So you've got a good carrot out there that you're dangling. <laughs> right? you got a very nice, sweet, juicy carrot that you are dangling out there. So that is going to attract all the operators to come lease the truck on with you. Now, why would these guys lease the truck on with you? A lot of them not been in the business long enough, and most companies won't trust them to run their freight because they're young. The authorities are young, new authorities. They're not part of a company, but you are a company that has multiple trucks, so why shippers then look at you differently than they look at an individual with just one truck, right? Right, right. This is why people will sign on to companies that have their authority. Now, and if you make your company, if you structure your company, its compensation package, I'm in a way that's 
that's more competitive than the average compensation package, you, you have to retain a lot more people. That's why we're offering the, you know, the pay, you know, we'll pay you a few if you take our loads, and we have a built-in system where we have loads that we can just dispatch straight to, um, to you. So if you're taking our loads, or, or, or we may even say if you, if, if, if 50% of the loads you run are our loads that we present to you, then we'll pay you a few costs. That's not a bad deal at all. Right? Right. And if you drop below, as you drop below 50%, if you drop down to 40%, then we'll pay half your fuel costs. If you drop below the if you drop below the 30%, you know, of our loads running, and you're running, you know, 70% of your loads are only running on uh, 30% of our loads, then you gotta pay your own fuel costs. Aha! <laughs> Okay, so here's what we're looking at. In your first year, with that type of strategy, you should bring on about 50 trucks. Now, how are you going to do that? What does that break down to? That breaks down to about four trucks per month. You get four guys sign on with you per month. All right? So, um, that time 12 months. So your first year you should be at about 50 trucks. Alright? If you got 50 trucks and let's say that owner operator that you signed on, that first guy you signed on, you're paying him um, uh, 1% of the of the load fees. Right? Now we already know the average load fee is what? Around $1,500, right? So we already know that. So that's $150. No, 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 I'm sorry, I take that back. Um, times 1%. What is my percent? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Times 1%. That's $15. That's not like a whole lot of money, right? $15 a load. Doesn't sound like a whole bunch of money, right? Y'all still with me? All right. Yeah, exactly. We know that the average carrier is going to run, what, about four loads per week, right? Right? Yes. yes. That's going to be $60 a week times 50 trucks. That's $3,000 a week. On top of his 95% that he's getting for his loads that he's running. That's that's three thousand dollars a week that he is going to be getting, regardless of if, you know, if he starts up his truck or not. That's one hundred fifty-six thousand dollars a year, y'all, just for letting us him be a limited partner and using his truck as a company truck. So once he becomes a partner in the company, he then. His asset becomes what? The company's assets, right? Yes. So what? So now you have effectively done what? Started a trucking company without what? Really owning mm -hmm. any trucks. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Don't let anybody fool y'all. I know a little something about this. You know this industry. <laughs> I do know this stuff. Uh, better yet, I know how to break it down to a lot of the biggest thing about consulting is having the background or or having the 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 the, 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 the skill to break things down to the most basics and being able to transfer your beliefs or your knowledge onto someone else. Okay. Believe it or not, that's all sales is. Sales is basically the same thing, but it's not knowledge, it's beliefs. So if you can effectively transfer your beliefs, you can effectively communicate your deep-seated belief 
right? I believe that this product is great. I believe this product is the best thing you've ever seen. I believe this product will help you. So if you can take that same commitment and your belief and you're able to effectively communicate that to someone and transfer that belief to someone else, then you will do what? Make a sale. I say this because that's how you all need to do your pitches. When you're pitching the the all operators, if you don't believe it, guess what? You're not going to be able to transfer that belief over to someone else. If you don't sound like you believe it, if you don't sound like you were just like, man, I think this is the best thing since sliced bread. If you don't have that enthusiasm and that belief embedded in your voice, in your body language, in your posture, in your facial expression. That's why I tell you all, record yourself when you're practicing your pitch and see what your facial expressions look like because you want to be able to, you know, display that because if it's on your face, it's coming out of your voice. I know y'all don't believe that. I know you, I know a lot of y'all will say, hey, I don't know about that, Kelly. I can, I can sign one way and be looking like I'm just, I mm, ain't interested. No, you can't. I promise you, you can't. Try it sometime. Try it sometime. Try saying some things with a smile on your face, you know, and the zoomers in your voice, and then try saying some things and try to frown and look like you're sad and try to say the same thing and see if it sounds the same. It's not going to sound the same. And if it don't sound the same to you, if it don't feel the same to you, it's not going to sound the same to the person on the other end of that phone. Okay? 90% of what you all do here is sales. You have to sell yourself. You have to sell the network. You have to sell that belief that you're going to make their lives better and you're going to help them make more money by having you as an owner or business manager. All right. Any other questions? Oh, somebody got a different question. So one, let's keep this going. This is um, this is free consultation. Y'all don't you don't get this very often. <laughs> this is free consultation time. Anybody? And now the time now that close the book. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all what's gonna happen. We're gonna get off here today. And not less than t- ten minutes after we get off, this phone won't start ringing. Mr. Butler, I got a question. Was you in class today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see my wife's face because I have it on speaker. Because I'm always doing something, so, I, and so, I, and so I'm always multitasking. So when calls come in, they automatically go to speaker. And if my wife was around, and you know, and she knows I've just been down here for about two, three hours, you know, giving people opportunities to ask questions, whatever. Because she watched the broadcast, she tuned in. Sometimes she's on here. <laughs> she, sometimes she's on here, and she just sit back and be quiet and just listen. And and. and I will literally just get off this. I packed up everything. You know, I, you know, I head back up, 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 up uh, to our spot, and I sit down. To a baby, how was your meeting today? Oh, oh, it was great. They said, "Yeah, I heard phone was ringing." Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> call for <laughs> an extension too. I pick up this guy was on BBS. Hey, Mr. Butler, how you doing? Hey, who is this? This is Gloria. Hey, Gloria, what's going on? I got a question. Now, okay. Gloria, were you just in the um on the show or or or, or in the conference call? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about the about the low boys. When you go on the low boys, I'm on the low boys. Like it don't give you the. They give you a, a, a different number. You don't get direct access to the broker. And what it is, is is it a subscription that we have to be under in order no. to get that uh, now, complete access? Now, now, which low board are you referring to? I know which one you're referring to. It's probably direct freight, right? That's correct. Okay. 
As I stated, this is why y'all probably need to get in the bank on the back office, not the back office, the, the, the chat group, okay? Because we addressed that in our last, you know, um, conference call, in our last, what, 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 what was it, Wednesday night uh, um, Q&A or something like that? Yeah, yeah we addressed that in Wednesday night Q&A. Uh, I have direct freight set up on my on my little cash out card. And <laughs> I forgot to fund my cash out card. <laughs> you know, I'm just you know, just being up front with you. So that's what happened. Uh, I have to find my wallet here. Yeah. Direct freight to set up on my cash out card. On my little black card. Not right there. Y'all see that? That's the little black card. Little cash out card. So direct freight is set up on that. Um I need to switch it over to let me take have my account number. I need I need to switch it over to my business card. So you got the trucks on it, RBBS LLC. Y'all see that? All right. I need to switch it over to that. Um, uh, and the reason why I did that I, when I when I signed up for direct freight, I put it on my cash app card because I wasn't sure if direct freight was going to be a good load board or not. I wanted to try it. I was just really just really just trying it out for a week or for a month. And I wanted to put it on a card that I knew didn't directly access my main business account. Okay? So I put it on that card because I really every you know month I just transfer enough money over to that card to take care of whatever bills that I have on that card. And doing this whole process of, you know, <laughs> buying this house and working with the surveyors and the yeah, the appraisers and the septic tank inspectors and the and the, you know, uh the wood destroying organism inspectors and, and all this stuff is just crazy. Getting it, running down all this stuff for the mortgage company and the VA and I just forgot to find the car. So <laughs> what happened was uh, it switched over to a um, um, none paid account. Okay, but if you are going to it now, you all will notice that that's not the case. It is back up and running properly the way it should be. Why? Because when they notified me of it on Wednesday night, I immediately went back in and did what? Updated it. So now, as you often see, when you look at the direct free load board. What do you have now? Aha! Y'all see that now? Y'all see it now? Yes. All right. So if you go, so it, so obviously you have not checked your direct freight um, account in a couple of days because I actually did this day before yesterday, right after the Wednesday night. Um, Q and A when someone brought it to my attention. Okay, Calvin, I have this. Yes, ma'am. First of all, did I solve that general problem? Did you answer your question? Hello. Okay. Well, I assume I answered this question. Yes, ma'am. All right, no problem. Yes, ma'am. So I have a straight eight. Now I have a corporate account. Do I have to get that for each one of my girls that I have, my dispatchers? What? Just, the, the a straight, straight eight. Yeah, that's the, that's to a separate company. We don't we don't own that. That's owned by Mr. Mr. Khalid Hall. He is a member of our network. You know, he was a student just like you all. And he did, he did his private consultation. We showed him how to think differently. And he went out and, you know, able um, to write that software. That's a different company. Now, straight eight, yes, each one of your people is going to have to get straight eight. Because so, so you all can't share the same. Um, there's no way for you all to share the same um, key. Okay. Well. So each of them has to get their own key. Now, with them getting their own key, they're getting the discount of $9.00. And 99 cents. Why? Because they're going to be going through what? The members link. Because what we send them, we send them the same thing that we send you all. Um, basically, here's what we send out on the invitations 
uh, when we're sending out the invitations for the uh, straight dispatch. We will send this is what goes out to give me a second here to the corporate members go down here. Uh, got all this stuff that we send out automatically. All right. All right, see what it says, welcome new member. If you are a corporate enrollee, your monthly subscription is covered by your employer. Okay, welcome um, um, corporate enrollee member. So they get all this stuff right here, right? Well, let me know what, I can't even show that because this has our straight membership link somewhere. Yeah, and, and we don't want to show that right now because people who watch this is going in there and then he'll be giving people um, discounts that don't deserve discounts. All right, but <laughs> they get the same uh, thing that's sent to them and it has the link to the straight uh, dispatch, um, 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 uh, the, it has the, the, the discounted link in it. All right, so so we send that to them. It has a discounted link in it for, for them to go to, just like you do, the same link that you got. They have that same link when we send it to them. So when they go to straight dispatch, they're automatically getting a straight, uh, a, a an RBBS uh, member's discount, okay? So they're only going to pay $9.99 per month for their straight dispatch versus other people who have been charged somewhere between $14.99 and $29.99 per month. All right. Now, they won't get the $4.99 discount on this monthly subscription. You get that. Why? Because you're the one who's paying what? The monthly subscription, right? right. To us. So if you get that $4.99 discount, right, they don't get it because, first of all, they're not paying the subscription. Now, if you have them set up on them paying you, to you know, to access all this stuff, that's fine. Okay, so as your own company, you can have um 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 um, um, um uh, you can charge an access fee, you know, to tools and resources or company training or just whatever you want to you know charge your people. Now, please do not go out and charge your people more than what your actual cost is. But I I wouldn't. Say to you all, charge each person forty nine dollars a month to access the tools and resources. Because then you're doing what? That's kind of um, deceptive practices, and you, that's predatory type practices. You're profiting off of something greatly that you're not really, you don't really, um, you don't really have it to your shop. It, it, it's not your property. It's not your intellectual property. But if you want to charge something, you know that that represents a recovery fee, you know, for what you are what you were paying out for everyone, because you're paying that ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents uh, per month. If you want to have each one of your members pay nine dollars ninety nine cents a month, that's fine. Okay, to you, they don't pay it to us because you're paying us the nine the ninety nine ninety nine, right? Okay. Okay. All right. But if you want to charge your own employees, you know, just whatever fee you want to call it, that's up to you. Okay, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, all we say is, you know, don't represent that charge as something that you're providing um, in whole. Um, in part, you are providing access, and you can you can call it a per member recovery fee, or you know. Training fee or whatever it is you're, you want to do it as that's fine, but yeah, each one of them is going to have to get their own straight dispatch, and we send them a link to do that and get the discount on. It. Okay. okay, we send them an invite. By the way, someone just signed up for a um, corporate enrollee, and they sent the same person over twice, but it's got a different email address, and I sent them a um, a request um, re requesting clarification. Because the interns, when they call me up, they say, hey, we've got a corporate enrollee uh, that we're trying to get set up, but we've got two separate email addresses for what looks like the same person. So uh, apparently, whoever sent it over, you sent over two separate um, 
female, uh, I can put it up and show it to you. Here's MC, who this is. Um, square. Let me pull it up and see who this is. Okay, so I was trying to hack my Square account. Yes, I have a very, very long password, so good luck with that. <laughs> it's about 27 characters and five numbers and three symbols, so good luck with it. Um, feedback, feedback, feedback. What's my feedback? Customers. Feedback. I think this was it right here. Yeah, Miss Curry. Uh, so if you're listening or if you're on here today, um, please get back with me and let me know because uh, we sent out, uh, when you sent this over to this person is the same person you sent, but it looks like the the email address is different. If we look at the, all the feedbacks here. So when you sent this over to us the first time, it had a slightly different email address, but it looks like it might have been a misprint, and then you recognize that, so I'm not sure. That's the email address you sent before, okay, and that's the name. So the name looks like it, is a, it, looks like it has two eyes in it, but then you turn around and you send it to us again, and the name has two L's in it, and the email address is different. But the phone number is the same. And the first name has one has two I's, the other has two L's, but they both have the same last name. So it, is this one person the same person, or is this two different people? They may be sisters or with the, the similar names, but we need to know <laughs> before we start just putting stuff in there because we don't want to set them up with the wrong information. Okay? And we want to make sure if it's two separate people, we want to set up two, two, two separate accounts. So, uh, Give us a call or shoot me or just respond to the message that we sent out to you on clarification. Is this one person or is this two people or is this the same person or if it's just one was a mistake you know, in the email address or whatever, and which email address you want us to use. Okay? Um, so I told them to hold off on setting that person up and sending out an invitation until we got clarification. So uh, please respond back to us and give us clarification. Thank you, sir. We tried calling you. Uh, also, too, but the number went to a voicemail that was full, so we couldn't even leave your message. So um, get in touch with us, okay? Get in touch with us so we can get that clarified and get your person added, um, um, your employees or employees added as soon as possible so they can get on with their training and start helping you to make some money, all right? Um, all right. In case y'all didn't know, corporate enrollments are up. A lot of people are advancing in, in their corporate enrollments. Now, one thing about the corporate enrollment is this. If you're going to um, do the corporate enrollment, let's say if you want to upgrade your regular enrollment to a corporate enrollment, you can only do a quote-unquote upgrade within the first 30 days. Okay? That's the way... Our board wants it. That's the way that our system is set up. So after 30 days, we can't just simply upgrade you. You have to start with a new enrollment package. So, it, 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 so in other words, if you're new and you, you were thinking about doing a corporate enrollment, you may want to double time it and get your carriers, get a bunch of carriers on, uh, sign up with you, get a bunch of on-offers signed up so you can go ahead and get ready to expand. Uh, why? Because it will save you about 350 bucks. Corporate enrollment on the 1.0, which allows you to add up to 10 individuals, okay? That allows you to add up to 10 individuals, uh, 10 employees besides yourself. So that would be 11 of you all. That is $699.95 on your enrollment fee. Now, your regular enrollment, individual enrollment is $349.95. If you upgrade your regular enrollment within the first 30 days, we're only going to charge you the difference between that and the six ninety nine ninety five. So that means we will upgrade, up, upgrade your regular enrollment and we will send you a, an invoice 
that's for three hundred and fifty dollars instead of an invoice of six hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents. And then we will just uh, cancel out your old monthly subscription and upgrade it to ninety nine dollars and ninety um, five cents per month, and you get an extra uh, thirty days to pay that. So if your old subscription fee was thirty four dollars and ninety five cents per month and your old subscription fee is due in five days and you uh, within your 30 day period of signing on with us and you're upgrading to your corporate enrollment so that means you're only going to pay $350 versus $699.95 on the corporate enrollment fee um, and you get a fresh 30 days so that $34.95 that is due in five days that's good no longer there. It's upgraded to ninety nine dollars ninety five cents, but you get thirty days to pay that from that date. So we've now just got a you know, more time added on to your due date. Is that, did everybody understand that? Hopefully you all got that and and you understand. Bottom line is if you were thinking about if you are new, if you just signed on within the last twenty some days and you're thinking about starting your corporate enrollment, do so before the, your thirty day mark. Because so after thirty days the system won't let us simply upgrade you. You've got to pay for the entire corporate enrollment. All right? And the same thing with upgrading from your corporate enrollment one point oh to your corporate enrollment two point oh, which is nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety five cent, and you can enroll up to twenty. Um, employees, if you upgrade your corporate enrollment 1.0 within the first um, 30 days to the corporate enrollment 2.0, then you just pay the difference between the what 699.95 and the 999.95. So if you're taking off what 699.95 cent, that means that corporate enrollment is only going to be what 300 and some odd dollars, right? Bucks for 300 bucks, right? And so you can, you all can see the, the big difference there. All right, if you're just upgrading instead of just starting all from the beginning. And then you've got the corporate enrollment unlimited, which is $2,499.95. So if you upgrade from that within the first uh, 30 days to that, to the, to the unlimited, you're basically getting into that at Pennies on the dollar. Why? Because if you upgrade within 30 days of your $999, uh, which cause we're going to take $999 off that, and then you're just paying the difference between that and the $2,499. Make sense, everybody? Yeah. But so so so. Um, so if you're really really pushing it, and you really really, you know want to get to, you know, that corporate enrollment, but if you want to save save some money, beat those 30-day marks, okay? After 30 days, you're not going to be able to upgrade. You're just going to have to start from the corporate enrollment on where it starts from, all right? All right, more questions, more questions. Oh, did we answer your question, um, by the way, to the young lady who posted yes. the question? All right, great, great, great. Uh, more questions? We've got about a half hour, half hour and 40 minutes. Let's hear it. Mr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. I, I got a question for you. Yes, uh, um, good morning, everybody. Hey, uh, I posted uh, something this morning about, uh, you know, selling done, shutting down. You know, and all the uh, the customers left hanging and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in in relation to that, and in relation to just you know, contacting ship and say we get you know some kind of opportunity to do so. Yeah, like, you also came in late. Yeah, I came in late, sir. Yeah, our first our our first forty minutes was on that and your post. <laughs> it, it, it literally was the first. That, that's the first. We opened up. Hey, uh, uh, everybody, uh, uh, just let us know. We 
did we not just we opened up with that? The first forty minutes was on that. Not an hour on that. Yeah, our first hour was on just that in your post. Thank you, by the way. Uh, and we, and we commend you on being, you know, a great participator in the chat group because it shows that you all are thinking. Shows that you particularly are thinking like a logistics entrepreneur. Because where everyone else sees gloom and doom, you saw an opportunity. Same thing I saw. Right, right. Exactly. Right. And not only did we talk about that, we did some research and we was able to find seller the client list. I see. I see. I just, I just liked that. Yeah. I was looking at it. Thank you. And you're welcome, everybody. So, yeah, we want to give a shout out. And you are again? Lloyd. Lloyd Jones. Lord Jones, what's the name of your company? Uh, QTAH Logistics, LLC. Okay, you got your website up and going? Uh, not as of yet. Okay. How's business going for you so far? How's the platform working out for you? It's working. I'm in the midst of contacting carriers. Okay. But yeah, but look. You did exactly what this platform is set out to do, and, it, and our the whole purpose of our platform is to get you out of thinking like logistics entrepreneurs, recognizing right. opportunities where everyone else is seeing gloom and doom. Right. And that was a perfect example of that. Perfect example of it. Everybody else is saying, "Oh man, this is terrible. You know, this is, oh, what we're gonna do? The industry going to hell in a handbag." In, in actuality. That right there was actually good for the industry. Right. <laughs> it, it really is. So not That's only are you going to see it, it opens up more opportunities for dispatchers and brokers, right? You're more than likely, that I, I predict there's a 90 percent chance that this week you're going to see higher paying loads on the low boards. Yep. Because they had a huge client base. A huge client base that is now literally left out of the cold. Right? They're frantic. Right. Exactly. They are frantic. They are frantic. Why? Because there's blood in the streets. And what old boy say when there's blood in the streets? Buy, buy, buy. <laughs> you know, don't sell. <laughs> buy. You know, you know, you know, and that's an old stock market. I um, appreciate you know, you know, uh, you know, investors when the when the stock market is bleeding, but they want to sell. Oh, my stock is running down. I got to sell. I got to sell, yeah. sell, 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 sell. Wow. I'm saying, man, let's let's buy as much as I can get my hands on. Because eventually, yeah. it's gonna do what? It's gonna start climbing back up. Right. So, and that's where you you can't make no money buying stock at high prices. You make money buying stock at the low prices. Stock only gets low with what? Well, it's in trouble, right? Exactly. There you go, man. That's why it's called a zero-sum game. <laughs> you ready to turn? This is a zero-sum game? Yeah, I always wonder what that was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ain't, no, ain't no room for the people that's playing at heart. <laughs> you got to be yeah. willing to risk losing it all in order to get big, huge gains. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Exactly. You know, I mean, I love, look, y'all know I'm, I've gotten into the thing uh, in buying stock and, you know, trading online, this and this. So I'm I'm getting pretty big in that. But let me tell you something. It ain't for the faint of heart. <laughs> you know, if you a nervous individual, don't get into it. <laughs> okay? Because you, cause you put your, your portfolio out there and you got $10,000 invested in, you know, in, you know, three different companies, and then you see their stock start dropping, you say, man, I just invested 10 grand with that company. Good night. <laughs> now, let me say this to you. If you can't afford to give away 10 grand, don't invest 10 grand. Only, only invest what you can afford to give away. My uncle, my uncle taught me that. That's one of the the things that he shared with me when it comes to investing. He said, only invest 
what you can afford to give away. Okay? Because if you can afford to give it away and you invest it and it makes you money, what? You're ahead of the game, right? If it doesn't make you money, you ain't really lost it because you, you can afford to give that away anyway, right? Right. Exactly. So if you can't afford to give to charity, don't invest it. <laughs> that's all. That's, I mean, seriously. Only invest what you can afford to give away um, to charity. I, and, and that just comes with your time, with your money, with, you know, just whatever. You know, your expertise, your whatever. Okay? So uh, keep that in mind. Someone once told me I need to go on a speaking tour. Someone said, I, someone said I, I, I said, I need to do a speaking tour because yeah. I got all these things that's stored in my head. Well, that, 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 yeah, that's the that autographic memory. You know, I would love to take credit for it, but it's, it's just a condition that I have that allows me to just remember every doggone thing I hear. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, it ain't got nothing to do with, you know, with, 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 with me, really. It's more of the condition. So that's just, you know, it is what it is. All right, but thank you, thank you. So you're the one who was responsible for all that. So so thank you. Um, I can tell right now that that you're on your way to um doing big things. I'm um, in the industry with the way you were able to uh, adopt that way of thinking. So, but yeah, we were just talking about that and how they are associated with um um, um with the company that does the truck financing. The quality uh, truck finance. Uh, you know about quality? Uh, quality. Yeah, I heard. I heard of quality. I heard of quality. Well, all the guys go get their trucks mm -hmm, with no yeah. money down. They leave out yeah. with seven hundred, nine hundred dollar week payments. Yeah, I heard about yeah. it. I heard some yeah. stories about it. Yeah, roughly one hundred and fifty to two hundred people there every day. About half of them were selling on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about a hundred um, Celion on ops every day at Quality getting trucks. Matter of fact, when you go there, they say they single them out. All Celion people come with me. <laughs> I'm serious. They do every day. They single them out. They got special treatment. Yes. They take them over to the new showroom floor first. They get first pick at the new trucks. Yeah, because they finna but get then into them. After, yeah, then after they go gone through and pick what they wanted, then they let everybody else have access to the new trucks. But before that, everyone else has to just go on the used truck lot and look at all the used trucks and all the lease trucks. The steady young people get to go to the new truck lot and, and, and decide if they want to get a new truck first. Man. And then after they've chosen what they wanted, then they allow the rest of the own operators to go over to the new truck lot, but not until the selling on people have gone through the pickings. And they charge you nine hundred to like a thousand a week. Seven hundred, fifty, nine hundred, almost a thousand dollars a week, man. Golly, <laughs> man. And then you wonder why they're going to these check you. Uh, all this cheap freight. I can't get no, all this cheap freight. All this cheap freight. Yeah, look at you. You pay nine hundred dollars a week for your truck, man. It, it, yeah, I'll freight cheap for you. <laughs> yeah, you, you. I mean, you, you, you can't run that in the bike. I'm not paying freight. Don't blame the industry. If you are for that. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, but thank you for that, man. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. No problem, man. All right, all right. All right. All right. Uh, I like it, y'all. I really like it when um, great minds think alike. Let me go ahead and, and mute you back out because there's some background noise there. There we go. Hopefully, we got rid of that background noise. Um, give me a second. 
Let me get rid of this background noise. There we go. All right. All right. Yeah, in the background, a little feedback there. All right. But look, I love it when great minds um, think alike. I love it when people, especially, you know, uh, my clientele and my students, you all are, are you know, obviously you, you're listening to me and you're taking the advice. Because I can tell it when I go to the chat groups. Okay, the chat groups that we have that you all in, they serve, you know, a dual purpose. Actually, they serve about three or four different purposes. One, it allows you all to network. Okay, um, these chat groups, they allow you all to literally network with each other and to help each other out. You all share valuable information. You all network. You all help each other find loads. You're, 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 I mean, you're sharing loads. You're sharing information. You're sharing training techniques. All that type of stuff. That is invaluable. This is where I think all the other training platforms, all the other freight broker training platforms and logistics training platforms, this, this is where they are lacking at. This is where they miss the boat. Okay? Because they don't want their people talking to each other. Now, I can't, I'm not going to try and deduce or deduct on or figure out why they don't want them talking to each other. <laughs> that ain't none of my business. But they don't want them talking to each other. They don't want their past clients who pay for those that, that two, three thousand um, dollars for those courses to talk to their new clients who are paying that two, three thousand dollars for their courses. <laughs> okay, and you can deduce what you want to from that, but obviously they don't want them talking to each other. They don't want them co-mingling with each other. They want to get you in your class, or you know, bring you to the boot camp. You're there for two or three days, or they're with you for two or three days, and they give you your certificate, your receipt, handshake, and say, okay, hope you'll make some money. Don't talk to each other. <laughs> you know, don't go, go, go look at some of my past, nah, past students. You know, don't do that. No, 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 no. Okay? Um, I, but I think that's where they missed the boat. Our platform is designed for you all to network. It's designed for you all to talk to each other. So that's the only way you're going to help each other. Now, is everybody going to be successful? No. I, I can see that. Okay. Um, I, I don't know any other platform um, uh, um, administrator that would tell you that. Okay. But I'm telling you that. Not everybody who signs on with our platform is going to be successful. Now, the biggest reason why everybody's not going to be successful, it goes back to the old adage, 50% of all um, 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 new businesses fail within the first year. We all know that saying, right? Everybody knows that. 50% of all new businesses, new entrepreneurs, new businesses, fail within the first year. Now, here's something that you all don't hear because no one gives a second part of that. There's another part of that same phrase, of that same caption that a lot of you probably never heard before, but it's, but it's, but it's in there, but people just leave this part out. 90% of those businesses that fail within the first year, so if you got a thousand businesses that get started, I love, I love going to my calculator. I like, I love numbers. Y'all know what I do. All right. I love numbers because numbers have a way of making things real. Okay, it'll, it'll just shine a light on something. So if you got a thousand businesses that start out, or let's say a thousand of you who start this platform, right? And if you go by the old saying of fifty percent of all first year businesses fail within the first year, right? That means within the first year, five hundred of you all are not going to be doing this anymore. Right? So, that divided by two. 500 are going to fall by the wayside. Now, here's the second part of that saying that you all don't hear about. 90% of this 500 fail because they gave up too soon. Y'all believe that? 
90% of that 500 bill that they gave you up too soon. Now, here's another part of it that you all never hear. 5% of that failed because they were just simply lazy. Didn't put forth the effort. Right? And another 2 to 3% of, of that number failed because they were complacent. Okay? They just, you know, wouldn't take directions, wouldn't, you know, follow the examples. They wanted to do it you know, their own way. They wouldn't, you know, follow the examples of people who are, who are successful. So when you break that down, right, and you take 90% from that 500 because they're the ones that just gave up too soon, that leaves 50 people failing. And another 450 people would have succeeded if they just kept pushing. Right? Then you got another 5% minus from that that failed because they were, what, lazy. That breaks it down to 47.5 people failing out of 1,000. Then you got another 2.5% to 3%, let's say 2.5%, because they won't follow directions, they won't follow the example of people who are successful, they think they know it all, so they want to do it themselves. So, that 500 gets you down to 45 people fail. That is the realistic, that, that's the realism of that saying. But no one ever hears the other part of the saying. They only hear the first part. Fifty percent of all businesses, you know, fail in the first year. That's true. But let's look at why those fifty percent fail. Yeah, a big portion is because if they just kept doing what they were doing, if they're doing it the right way, if they kept doing what they were doing, they would eventually see profitability, and then they'd be on their way to what? Always making money. My wife, when she started her cleaning um, service, I think we pumped about $27,000 um, into her business the first three months. I mean, workers' comp insurance, we had to hire employees, had to have all this stuff done, all this, just money, money, money. I mean, tubes, equipment, had to get a truck for a business, everything, money. And then she went out with one business, big contract, but it was a big contract, which means she needed to get about a thousand or three thousand dollars on what the, um, you know, on supplies and restock. She had to up her insurance. Why? Because in order to work on that big project out there with that, with around those, um, all those, um, Construction workers and, you know, they, they build a new apartment complexes. She had to have X amount of insurance. She had to hire, what, nine to ten employees. She got, you, any other thing about workers' comp? Oh, my God. Workers' comp by itself was like thirty five, almost $3,000 a month. So y'all think it's cheap to run a business, a cleaning service? Now, that's a lot of money, but remember her contract, it was like a $260,000 um, contract. 244 units, $500 a unit. Right? Each unit, you know, that's $500 a unit. You know, um, um, be clean. So, the, you see, the one behind that was there's 444 units, you know, $450 a unit. So, there's money to be made, but you're going to spend money. Now, someone who, who doesn't have that longevity, who can't endure that, a lot of people are just going to give up. It's too hard. It's too difficult. There's too much going on. Same thing with this. If you start out and you're making phone calls, you're making phone calls, a phone call, and you're getting guys that are giving you objections, but you ain't really took the time to learn your pitch the way you should have, so you don't know how to overcome those objections, and you keep hearing those guys say, well, what about this? What about that? And you let them take control of the conversation instead of you taking control of the conversation. A lot of them just bully you right out of the conversation. And you all start thinking to yourself, man, I, 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 I can't do this, and I don't know enough, you know. The market is already full. These guys don't need uh, what I'm offering. No, you're not able to sell what you're offering. 
Learn to become a salesperson and watch how your business just takes off. I know I keep harping on sale, sale, sale. So that's what this is. You have to drag yourself to the point and teach yourself to be a salesperson. You have to teach yourself to become a master salesperson. Because once you get that script down pat and you're able to pitch it and you're able to do it um, in a manner that your facial expression, your voice expression, your body language, everything about you says, I love this, this is the best thing since sliced bread, you need this, I'm going to make sure you get this whether you want it or not. Once you get to that and you're able to do that, <laughs> then you're going to be like, well, that 50%. Which is really more like what? 95% that will make it if you have that type of commitment, if you learn your craft, if you learn your tools and resources, if you learn your pitch, you learn how to be a salesperson, you're committed, you make the phone calls, you're open to listening to what successful people do to make their business successful instead of just trying to do it on your own. You use the network inside of it, you ask questions, you Tune into the classes. You do the work, and you will be successful. All right. Anybody disagree with that? Anybody want to challenge that? And I'm more than happy to, to talk about it. I agree wholeheartedly. Okay. I love this industry. I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of people say, well, yeah, Cal, you made money on the consultant. No, before I was a consultant, I was just a dispatch friend. Before that, I was a freight broker friend. Before that, I was an owner operator. Before that, I was a, what, company driver. I didn't become successful just because I failed at that. I became successful just because I was successful at that. And I just stepped up to the next step. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, so it kills me when people say, when people say, oh well, you know, he's just doing that because you know he couldn't make it as a he couldn't make it as a you know as a dispatch firm. Well, he's doing that because he couldn't make it as a broker. Well, he's doing that because he couldn't make it as a driver, another you know, operator. He couldn't make it. That don't make no sense. <laughs> you don't fail and then we fall up, <laughs> right? No. You got to be successful and, and step up each time. Each time you're stepping up to something else that you're trying to master. You've mastered that. You accomplished what you want to accomplish in that. So then you step up to the next level. You master that. You accomplish you accomplish that. And you step up to the next level. Same thing. What you all are doing? You start out on your on your individual enrollment, right? When you get yourself enough carriers on operator signed on, you hire people. Right? Now you got to get them trained so you step up to what? The corporate enrollment 1.0. And then you master that and you got to step up to the corporate enrollment 2.0. Then you get to the point where you got yourself 100 or 150 um, carriers and you got yourself, you know, need to hire yourself 40 or, or, or you know, more than 20 dispatches. So then you step up to what? The unlimited. You don't step up if you're not being successful at the level before. If you fail at that, how, how are you going to afford to step up? And then, look, there's nothing complicated or magical about any of this. It really isn't. It's just a matter of just following the steps, doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, listening to and taking good advice, networking with each other, learning your script, practice good sales habits, and watch how your success just kind of just starts falling right into place. That's all it's about. Okay. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap it up. Do we have anybody out there that had a question or anything that they wanted to um, say or wanted to ask before we Wrap this up.
Anybody? No question. I had a question for you. Um, yes, when you were talking about uh, uh, having instructors for the um, the program you're getting started. So, mm -hmm. in okay, so for for the one, so just say for the Orlando area, you need one instructor for that area. So, will that person only do like one class? Or is it like an ongoing thing? Or as you do that one class in Orlando, that's it, then you move on to Miami, then that's it, then you, you – know, I know you say you have four instructors per per city, well, per state, or how, you know, how you say you broke it down. So yeah. is, that, is it like a continuous thing, or is it just that you teach that one class and that's it? It is a continuous thing, okay? And this, was, this, this is what we're talking about. Um, right here, the RBBS Logistics Learning Center, Freight Logistics Training, uh, Certification, and Guaranteed Career Placement Fairs. Okay, um, do you all, uh, let, me, let me see if I can. I don't know if you all can pull this up by the PDF, but I know definitely if you go to the website. Here, let me take y'all to uh, through the website area. If you go to give me a second. Here. If you go here. To the website. I'm taking y'all right. To the, I'm gonna give y'all a link right to the page. This is the link directly to the page. All right, that's the page link right there. All right, once you get once you get to this page. And to get to the career fairs um, area, you're going to scroll down. And it tells you a little bit about it right here. The RBBS Logistics, the RBBS I mean, LLC Freight Brokers Training Certification and Job Fair and Career Placement Event. Uh, freight Broker uh, slash Agent Training Certification and Career Fair. Four, four weekly career training um, certification and career placement events per year in each state, in the 48 contingent states. So that's four per year in each state, okay? And it's going to be held in four different cities in each state. So every three months, you got an event in the state of Texas. The first, let's say in March, it may be in Dallas, March, April, May, June. So in July, it's another one's going to be in San Antonio, right? August, September, November. In November, you're going to have another one. Or September, you're going to have another one where? In Houston. And then you have another one in Corpus Christi in December, in December or January, you know, somewhere around there. You see what I'm saying? You see how that works? Yes, it's so fun. There, does it keep ro so does it keep rotating in the state, or after that last one, then that's it? No, no, it rotates around every, every year. Every year. From then on out, it just keeps rotating back around. Okay. All right? And that's in, you know, in, you know, hopefully – our goal is to, is to get that going in all 48 states. Now, starting out, will we be in all 48 states? No. Our uh, pilot run is going to be here in Florida. Okay? This is not something that's going to happen, like, all at once. No, this is going to be over a period of about five years. Okay? These, this, these are part of my long-term goals for the, for the RBBS Logistics Learning Center. These are our long-term goals for, for uh, our company and the platform. Okay? Um, we will still. This is separate from what you all are involved in now. This will be a separate um, uh, um, 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 platform um, than what we have right now under our company. So we will still have the individual enrollments for people who want to start their own businesses. But we realize not everybody is equipped with the mental capacity or the, the emotional you know, um, stamina to run their own business. A lot of people just want to go work for someone, and that's all well and good. But we want them to come work for the people who are what? Participating within 
our platforms down. You all will, you all will start your own business. All this is by design, in, in case y'all haven't peeped this out yet. For those of you that haven't peeped this out yet, this is all kind of an integral plan that was mapped out all before I even started, you know, our first broadcast that we did two and a half years ago. It was all part of a mapped out plan. First part of the plan was to create a platform where we could mold, coach, and help people create their own businesses, right? Create an army of individuals that had their a network, a huge network of business owners, logistics um, business owners, on your own dispatch firm, on your own freight brokerage firm. That's why we switched from us being a brokerage firm to starting a consulting firm so that we could train people and teach you all how to start your own businesses. Now, once we got you all up and running and you're starting your own businesses, right, we got you all to expand into the corporate enrollments where you all are now um, in a position to do what? Hire individuals, right, as dispatch agents or freight broker agents, and they can work from where? Their own location. They don't have to be in your house. They don't have to be in your business. They don't have to be in your state. They don't even have to be in your country. But they can be signing on with your company and booking freight for your company, right? From anywhere in the world, right? Yes. Now, once we got that going, then our goal was to set up a, a platform for those individuals that had no interest in running their own business or who can't run their own business, who just don't have the gumption or the stamina to run their own They don't have that aspiration. They just want a good paying job, a good paying career, right, that they can work without someone looking over their shoulder and always say, hey, do this, do that, do that and do this. Right? So, if we were going to create that ideal training platform that trains people to go work for somebody, what's the next best thing? Have it to where they can have guaranteed career opportunities, right? After they graduate, right? And who better to have them to go work for than who? Me. Yes, you can. <laughs> You all, you all, the students who we have trained to start their own businesses. Why? Because this not only helps them to get guaranteed employment, but it provides a pool for you all to have good trained people. Why? Because you train them. <laughs> Makes sense, yes. Okay. You had a hand in training them. So if you're in the state of Florida and you're one of the five instructors, the five firms, which means you have to have and what are the qualifications to, uh, to be an instructor, you must be a state licensed dispatch firm or a federally bonded freight brokerage firm. You must be able to guarantee what? A career placement within your firm. You must be guaranteed to make an offer to everybody who graduates from this event, right? You must be able to offer that person uh, the ability to work remotely, which means they do not have to show up at your place of business every day. They can work from their own home. Now, if you meet those criteria, you can be an instructor with these events. So if you're in the state of Florida, and we're holding four events, and we got five instructors. You're one of those five instructors. A week before the event takes place, because the event is an entire week long. A week before the event takes place, you're going to come down. We're going to fly you down to Florida. We're going to fly you down to Miami. It's the first one that's in Miami. That's gonna we're going to fly you down to Miami. How can we afford this? Why? Because we have a minimum class size of 45 students before we can put the events on. Right? If we have a minimum class size of 45 before we can put the events on, right? It's amazing how that number just sticks out there, right? 
times, and the tuition is $7,500. Which is, by the way, is paid for by what? Government agencies. <laughs> you, all, you all thought to see how everything is kind of part of a, is an intricate plan that kind of propels and, and, and self benefits itself. So, how can we afford to pay for your travel and, and pay you all $25,000 to take place in, in this, you know, two weeks of first week is just really just leisure time out for you and your family. The second week, you're really working not every day because we only need two instructors uh, per day. So, the other three have time off to do what? Spend with their family. And then we need all of you all on the last day for what? The final testing. Right? So, 45 students a minimum totals up $337,500 per event. That's at the minimum of 45 students. Maximum we can um, accommodate is 100 students. So, if we're at the bare minimum, we're paying each one of you all $25,000. That's $100,000 that we're paying out, right, um, per event, right? Actually, more than $100,000. is we got five of you all. So that's what one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, right? Yes. Y'all checking my math? That's one hundred twenty-five thousand that we're paying out. Still leaves us with two hundred twelve thousand dollars. Five hundred. Now the cost per student to put these on, and we spell out. And look, we we are so transparent; it is not even funny. Oh, this is spelled out right here. I mean, we sat down and, and spelled out for you all. <laughs> yeah, the whole nine yards. The cost analysis, where we got the numbers from, how we came up with the numbers. We even provide you with the sources of where those numbers came from, uh, what the income potential is for the brokers and the dispatchers, all supplied by other outside sources that show us this stuff. Then we get down here, we go into the numbers and how it breaks down, the cost analysis, right, pricing, hotel accommodations. How do we, how do we get that number? We get that number, if you click on it, it, tells you right, it goes you right to the area of where we got those numbers from. We didn't just pull this stuff out of the air. Why? Because we want to be able to show the government agencies that are funding this where this stuff is coming from. We want to be able to show them concrete numbers that are real, not stuff that we just made up. This is where our numbers come from. On each and every cost that we have in here, we have it, we have the source of where those numbers come from. Meals, uh, you know, whole nine yards. Didn't this require a lot of research? You bet your bottom dollar it required a lot of research. This was during the time when I spent that eight and a half, nine months in that storage unit when I was starting up this business and putting together my uh, my business plan. Try spending nine months living in a storage unit. This is where I gained 140 pounds because I was knuckled in right between a Sonic and a, a, a Golden Corral. And all I had time to do was get up, go to the place, run across the street, grab something to eat, and come back and run my 24-hour dispatch run while I was building this whole concept. I spent nine months doing that. So if anybody hints to you that I'm not, I'm committed, you might want to check it. Okay? You can say a lot of things about me, but you can't say I'm not committed. I can guarantee you that. So when I talk to you all about being committed to something, I'm not talking to you just about throwing words out that I picked up somewhere, okay? That's not what I'm doing. I'm doing it because I don't live this. What you see now is a result of the struggle. <laughs> Trust me on that. I know where you're at. I know where you're coming from. I know what you're going through. Don't think I don't. Because I do. Okay. It's great to appreciate it. All right. So, you know, putting this stuff together, and, and I greatly appreciate you all. But, you know, 
you all have to understand, you know, everything, all this was mapped out long before I even started making phone calls on the carriers, before I started developing the pitch. All this stuff was already playing out and mapped out. Okay, all this stuff, everything from the travel, you know, what it costs, you know, the travel, uh, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. All this stuff comes from, you know, <laughs> painstaking, you know, going through stuff statistics wise, you know, just, you know, whole nine yards. So we've determined that um, our cost to put this on per student, okay? The cost analysis is $9,975. All right? So, um, that's the cost analysis. All right. Now, were we able to break this down to a a significant less cost? Yes. Total estimated cost analysis per student is eleven thousand eight hundred twenty-four dollars and sixty-four cents. But you want to be able to show the federal government that you can do it at a discount, right? Seven nine hundred dollars per student. Right? Because it's really not costing us quite nowhere near that much money. Okay? After paying the instructors and everything and what the instructors uh, should get and all that type of stuff, that's why we're paying you all the $25,000. Right? Our actual cost, our actual cost, and I mean, I'm not going to tell y'all what the actual cost is, but it is a lot less than this. Okay? But our cost analysis we're able to show that this is what it would cost to put these type of events on and what it would, what, what the average company would cost to get this stuff done. Now, this is why a lot of companies don't do this, because they don't know how to get the discounts. We do, or I do. Okay, I was able to contact, you know, all the different venues and stuff, stuff that was, you know, different hotel chains, you know, with, you know not just showing up in Houston and say, hey, we're going to pick a hotel. No, we've already contacted you know, um, uh, um, Marriott and Sheridan and Clarion. Those are the only hotels that we're going to be staying in. Very, very nice hotels. It's not little Motel 6s or anything like that. But because we're going to be doing this on a big scale, there were those companies offered us what? Certain memberships, right? Y'all know how you get these travel cards and these hotel cards and stuff and these memberships, right? Yes. Yeah. What What do you think? What What type of do you think we were able to get the platinum plan if we're offering to bring in forty a minimum of forty five students, you know, at least <laughs> to their hotel at least four times a year in different in all forty eight states? How many United States? We don't. Yeah, we don't get platinum membership. We get presidential minimum. Our memberships, our plans. So we get huge discounts. Okay? We get huge discounts. So, in actuality, right, we're looking at this and our expenditure really is about $127,000 per event. Okay? So, take that number right there. Right, and we're moving out, taking out about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So we're profiting about ninety-two thousand five hundred on per day. So the state of Florida, we were doing four events. That's what we're profiting each year per state, and that's if it's only forty-five students. Now, we keep up around 75 students or 100 students up to our capacity. It's a lot more than that. Okay? That times 48 states. Once we get up to our full um, um, once we get up to full saturation in all 48 states, we're looking at a machine 
that generates in revenue and profitable. And profitable prof, that's after paying it. All of you all, your twenty five thousand dollars each per event, that's a hundred thousand dollars a year um, that you all are making just for what? Two weeks, not even really two weeks, is one week of work. Because so your first week you come down, you know, we're gonna get together, we're gonna meet, you know, you know, each morning, we're gonna go we're gonna do a walkthrough of what we're gonna be doing for each class and the training. That should take us about what, two, three hours in the morning after that, your day. It's your day. You know, go to Disney World, go to Epcot Center, go to Sea World, go to Miami Beach, go check out a you know, a Houston Rockets game or something, or whatever you want you know, just whatever you doing. Right? And then the week of the events, everybody does it uh, for the first day, you know, the orientation. But after that first day, we only need two instructors. Right? Two instructors on Monday, the other three can do what they want to do. Two instructors on Tuesday, the other three can do what they want to do. Two instructors on Wednesday, the other people can do what they want to do. Two instructors on Thursday, do what they want to do. And on Friday, everybody comes back, everybody's got to be there for Friday um, for the final exam. And then on Saturday, you all are there. Why? Because that's the time when the students, the graduated students, are going to be interviewing you all to see which company they want to go with. You all are not going to be interviewing them to see which company, see which one of the students you all are going to take, because you all will have what guaranteed to offer what a position to all of the graduates. So it's like a reverse job fair. The graduated students have all the control. They're going to be interviewing each one of you all. Tell me about your firm. Tell me what your firm um, is offering. What's your split on the dispatch this is in there? What type of tools and resources um, do you have available? What type of training program do you have available? And you all have what? A training program, the same training program that you all went through. Why? Because you can add them onto what? Your corporate. You all see how all this ties together? Yes. <laughs> okay. It, remember, I told y'all I was good at puzzles. That's my thing. That's 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 what it means to have an autographic memory. I'm good at puzzles. I'm good at looking at things and seeing patterns. I I see patterns. Like I see dead people. I see patterns. <laughs> that's what I see. Okay. <laughs> but I, you can you can throw stuff at me and say, Calvin, show me how to make this, how to put this into a Plan. Look, I can make this complicated stuff all come together. I said, okay. Why? Well, because I see patterns. I'm good at puzzles. I'm good at patterns. Don't play me when it comes to chess, because I might hurt your feelings. <laughs> Literally speaking. Because <laughs> even if I see where I can't beat you, I will stall you to death. And then that gets you what? Frustrated. I went up against guys that much better. Much, much better chess players than I am. But I was able to beat them. Why? Because I frustrated them. I would sit there for 40 minutes before I make a move. <laughs> Running all the scenarios through my head. And you on the other side, say, man, make a move. Shh, hold on. Quiet, I'm thinking. Because <laughs> that's part of the strategy of chess, right? That's why I love chess, right? And y'all even say it all the time. This is chess, not checkers. And so I'll show you all this. When, when are you accepting, like, the resumes for it? Because I'm very interested, and I'm right here. We're, like, we're, we're accepting resumes now. If you go to, um, we, have a, we have a Facebook group called... Um, Hold on here. We have a Facebook group. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. We actually have a Facebook group called Freight Brokers, Instructors, and Trainers. I own a lot of Facebook groups. A lot of y'all probably don't even know that we own them. <laughs> like um, Freight Brokers, we own that group. Uh, freight Brokers um, versus Instructors, we own that group. So there's a lot of groups that we own on Facebook that y'all have no idea that we own them. Okay, that's by design. Why? Because it's way for us to brand. And this is one of the groups that we own. Freight broker instructors and trainers. Okay? First thing you see on this group, you know, when you come to this group, is the very first thing you see that's pinned to the top of this page 
ominous group is this right here. This is at the very top of the page. It's always there. And that is what? $100,000. Eight weeks of work. The Army Vets Logistics Learning Center is looking for logistics instructors and trainers. Qualified prospects must be a logistics industry professional, possesses a federal tax ID number, owner or partner of an active LLC incorporated logistics firm committed to offering career opportunities to new industry pro uh, professionals. All interested parties may submit letters of interest to the RBBS Logistics Learning Center email training at the rbbsllc.org 866-973-6445 extension 2 training and certification and there's the link right there right over to where our website that's our corporate website this is our corporate website not the website you all go to this is our corporate website this is where all this is at and here again this is where you can go and you can you know register for the you know, you know, for different things you can go to the career fairs and see what and see what this is and then you can pull up our career fair our brochure you can also pull up our course schedule this is how it will all go down when the students um, from step by step on day one, you know, this orientation is all mapped out, laid out. What the course studies, what the what what the course is each day, what's going to be uh, the course studies of each day. At the at the end of each day, each student uh, must complete a um, 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 a quiz. You know, when they go back to the hotel room, they must complete a quiz, and they must pass that quiz at a grade of 70 before they can, what, attend the next day of training. Okay? And each day is mapped out when it starts, when lunch breaks, what's going to be covered, and this all is always going to be the same. Okay, what was okay, that? What was that? We're, we're, um, again... Um, it is freight broken instructors and trainers. Let me give you all the link to it right now. All right, y'all. I, I gotta get ready to get out of here. My blood sugar is talking to me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I gotta go find me something to eat. I can feel myself getting lightheaded and, and unsteady. All right, so there you go. All right, everybody. No problem, man. Thank you all. All right, everybody. Um, we're gonna call that. We're gonna call it for the day. Um, I feel my hands tingling. My blood sugar is telling me, "Oh, okay, it's time to eat." So, guess what? I gotta go eat. Uh, but I just want to let you all know I do appreciate each and every last one of you all. I hope you all are getting a lot out of this platform. I hope it's living up to what you all. Uh, what you all expected from, because I hate having people to pay for something that's not of value. Okay, that's not what I'm about. Okay, um, um, I I I reviewed a lot of freight broker training platforms, and a lot of them they ain't worth the the paper that they're printed on. I mean, they're really not not for not for the kind of money that they ask me to pay. And you have nothing, literally nothing. You know, when you're done, you have got a receipt. A certificate and a handshake, and someone said, "I hope you go make some money." Um, by my standards, that don't cut it. Not for what they're charging, you know, seven hundred, twelve hundred, three thousand dollars, some even more than that. Um, it's, 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 it's not what you know it's worth. Um, if I'm gonna have someone to pay, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars, I'm gonna have them to attend something like this. Okay, this is what we want them them to have. You know, we're all the travel accommodations, the pay for the hotel um, accommodations, pay for the three meals, three restaurant meals a day, pay for uh, Uber and Lyft rides, you know why they're there, pay for. Okay, we are all about offering something that no one else has seen before, and on top of that, guaranteed career placement. It's not a well. I hope you go find a job. I hope you go make some money. No, 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 no. We put a mechanism. 
a system, a network in place that would guarantee them what? Career placement. And the same mechanism would guarantee our instructors what? A way to what? Expand and build their firms. Well, good, well-trained people. Why? Because you train them. And not only that same mechanism pays those instructors for, for their time. So if you're taking a couple of weeks or a week out of your time, we're paying you 25 grand. Okay? So that's who we are. You know, I know a, a lot of freight broker trainers, they look at our platform and they only see the, you know, little, you know, you know the, the, the big chubby dark skin guy, you know, that's talking about, you know, sales and, and dispatching and signing up carriers and they think that's all there is to us. No, I just let them keep thinking that. <laughs> you know, but we, once you're in the platform, you all quickly realize there's a lot more than meets the eye. Okay, this platform is a wealth of knowledge, information, and benefits. No one, there's not another platform on the face of the planet that gives you more tools and resources, more opportunity than this platform does. For the money that that you're putting out, thirty. Nine dollars, ninety-five cents a month. Come on, really? All right. Thank you all. I appreciate each and every last one of y'all. Hope y'all have enjoyed the show for today. Uh, thank you all. You, all of you all who participated. All the questions were great. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lloyd, for uh, bringing out and bringing it to our attention. You know about the the Celion crisis and how that crisis is going to benefit. Uh, uh, logistics firms uh, within the industry is actually going to make for better loads and higher paying loads. So, uh, and thank you for recognizing that. Thank each and every last one of you all for joining our platform. I really appreciate you all. I appreciate your participation in, in the chat groups. Keep it up. Keep doing that. Keep, keep sharing information. Keep helping each other out. Um, so that's what it's all about. But those of you who, are, who, are, who have noticed our platform and you're interested in joining our platform, just go to mydispatcher.org. That is singular, not plural. That's mydispatcher.org. Once here, you're going to scroll down, and right underneath this video, you're going to see where it says to enroll to get started. Click here. Once you click that link, that's going to take you right over to our the automated um, enrollment, where you all will see the individual platform enrollment. Yep. You can click the view more, tell you all about that enrollment, and you can click here, add it to your cart, and pay within a debit or credit card. Or if you want to see all the other plans, you can click off of that, and it will show you all the other options. Our, we have a veterans um, enrollment, individual enrollment, corporate enrollment for up to 10 agents, corporate enrollments for up to 20 agents, and we have the franchise opportunity, and of course, the logistics training guaranteed career placement events, which is going to start in March. Um, if any of you are not part of the government um, programs, if you don't qualify for the VA, um, um, uh, um, if you don't qualify for the VA um, rehab program, if you don't qualify for the low income program, if you don't qualify uh, for the um, food stamp program, if you don't qualify for the um, housing, um, um, low income housing uh, um, program, if you don't qualify for any of those government assisted programs, you can pay for it out of your pocket. It is $7,500. Um, we are going to be offering, we are in the process of working with different um, factoring companies that have expressed interest in financing this for you. So um, hopefully we can um, get something going with a couple of the uh, factoring companies who will be, who have expressed some interest in financing this for those individuals that don't qualify for those government programs and where the government pays um, your, um, your tuition. So, um, but there we have it. We appreciate you all. Um, look us up. The RBS Logistics Dining Center. Um, we think, you know, we're, we're worth the look see. Thank you all again. I will see you all back here on not next Saturday, but it'll be after the first of the month. This is the last broadcast. We hope it was a great broadcast. Hope y'all loved it. Hope you all get a lot of views out of it. It'll be in the, on the YouTube channel. 
Um, today, before the night, before the day is up, it will be in the back office um, definitely by Monday. So, um, y'all have a great Christmas and New Year's. And for our students, we will be seeing you all on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Uh, leading up to the Christmas holiday, after that, we will be back after the first of the year. Thank you all, and you all have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year's. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe, everybody. Have fun. Be safe. Hope Sound brings you all everything that you all were looking for. And uh, love all of you all. Thank you all again. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.